Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Happy Thursday night. We're looking at John's Home Light XL 101. This is a saw that he grew up with. Uh, him and his brothers and his dad cutting firewood. And recently it's developed some issues. Uh, we're going to take care of. So, hi Leon, if you're reading this, then I hope the saw made it to you in one piece. Thankfully it did, just fine. Uh, this saw was my dad's, so I'm guessing it's 50 years old or thereabouts. That's a good dang guess. Uh, that serial number is... too old. Or it's a seven digit, so I'd have to look at Chainsaw Lady's records, but I'm going to guess that this is somewhere around a 67. Just a rough guess. Dad's been gone, okay, lots of memories cutting wood with my dad and my six older siblings. Dad's been gone for 15 years now, but I was hoping to get it up and running again. Hopefully it's not too far gone. In addition to the things we discussed earlier, piston cylinder carb fuel work, the manual oil plunger leaks. In 2015 I purchased a gasket, I think it's what's needed. Thumb oiler on the button, da da da. Okay, so this saw needs a lot of work, but it's not it's not done not yet thankfully these parts for the uh, XL 101 are some of the easier ones to find but let's go through it uh, the scored piston it's pretty obvious this is the old cylinder looking through the this port doesn't look terrible there's some scoring on that side but then there's all that crap on the muffler side she's good and tore Tore up. There's a lot of transfer there. The cylinder's done. Now, I don't know for certain what all got started, but I got a pretty damn good idea. You can see something was bouncing around. That pin is not where it belongs. I think the retainer clip that was supposed to be on this side came loose for some reason. And I think it ended up on the top of the piston. Now, why that happened, I don't know. I'm going to guess she got hot. And I don't actually think it was a fuel issue. I think it was a cooling issue. How many fins are we missing on this bloody flywheel? I don't know what got in here and did all this damage. Initially, it looks like something got broken on one of these sides. And the old trick was to bust off an equal number on the other side. But then this mess over here, the whole thing is out of balance. And I would say over 50% of the cooling capacity is gone from this poor flywheel. So, to me it's no big surprise here, unfortunately, uh, with this, this uh, engine damage. But, I do have the parts here. Uh, this is an older one, this is a first generation. There are no screws holding this tank together. This is a bonded tank. And it has leaked before. And I think it's leaking right now. I think, I could be wrong, but I think it leaked and somebody put a layer of JB on the outside. I don't think they actually split the tank. It's part of what did in this series of saw in the United States for the most part. It's these bonded tanks. Uh, it was real common for the fuel tank and you see the oil tanks, the same damn thing. The first time a dude pinched the uh, bar tip, and you pull back trying to pull it out, would break that seal loose. Now, for the tanks, the oil tanks, they released a kit where you could do a screw through there and put a gasket in. But this is definitely kind of a mess in that sense. So what I'm going to do... These appear solid on the outside. I'll double check that. And I'll probably, I'm going to try pressurizing this tank. It probably is a stupid idea, but I'm going to try hooking the pressure gauge up to a good fuel hose. This one's way too stiff. And then pumping it up, and I'll see if I can do the soap trick around here and confirm if the seam is leaking, this is going to get red coat. Same thing on that oil tank. I'll just red coat the damn things and be done with it. Like I say, Pistons here. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff Hendricks. Uh, uh, he's on eBay out of New York. JW Team Z something. Big old long username, but he's got a ton of home light parts. And if I don't have something, I usually go to him. 
had the cylinder on hand a little a little surface corrosion that a little brake clean is going to take that right off important note on these things there are two different cylinders and crankcases that are used let me grab this other one I didn't know which one we were going to need so I got multiple junk out so look at the width of this piston skirt there or excuse me the cylinder skirt and then that one you may not be able to tell on the camera but there's a sixteenth of an inch difference there this is a thin skirt this is a thick one you can tell that and I'll take it back that marking isn't going to tell you I thought they would change the two here, but they didn't. They're both marked the 63165A, but I put the caliper on them, and like I say, sitting right here, I can see the difference. So in that instance, the only difference is that's got like a 69 in there, and then that appears to have a three. So maybe this was made in 73? I honestly don't know, but if you're buying a cylinder for one of these things, you need to pull your saw apart and see what your old one is first. I think that's a date stamp because that one says 67. But it doesn't have a dash A right there. So, this can be tricky. If you're, if you're looking at one on eBay or something, it's worth the time to message the seller and say, Hey, what size is it? And make sure you get something in sixteenths. If you didn't, he probably didn't measure it. Or he's just guessing. So anyway, piston cylinder, good to go. Uh, I'll have to talk to John and see if the, uh, the bolt for this uh, handle bracket got upsized or if I need to put a, an insert back in there. This one has the fuel tank vent back there. I'm sure that's goobered up, so I'll put a new duck bill in that. Uh, other than that, pulling it apart, there wasn't a huge other list that I came up with. This oil discharge line is pretty, pretty kinked off and may even have a small puncture in it, so if I've got one of those on hand, I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Carb kit, obviously, that's well, I'll check it. You know, if the saw, if it doesn't need it, I won't put one in there. Uh, and it's possible that it won't. It did have, <laughs> this is pretty creative. This is a custom muffler. I'm assuming the original one rattled off at some point. So again, I'll have to have John weigh in. I'm sure I can find one of these stack mufflers. Or we can put this one back on. It doesn't bother me any. It, it does about as much as the factory one did, which is not that much. So, anyhow, there it is. That'll be the next build, I think. Obviously, since it's spread all over my bench, I'm going to have to do something with it. I think I'll try sometime this weekend to get that put together.